Welcome back. In this video, I'll be going over my custom shield system and how to use it. Uh, this is a general use utility that I have available on GitHub, where there is written documentation if you don't feel like watching this video, or if you need any clarification on anything that I cover here. Uh, the link to that repo will be in the description. I'm going to cover the base behavior of the system's mechanics, covering attributes as they come up. I'll have chapters set up so you can skip around the video if needed. Uh, also, for ease of consistency of appearance, there's a generator that can help you create shields with the intended attribute display. I'll cover how to use this generator later in the video after I go over the base mechanics. When holding a shield in your main or offhand, and you don't have a cooldown active, you can hold a right click to start blocking. The system will prioritize blocking with your offhand. Now, the amount of time you can hold up the shield is determined by the max time attribute. This is a value in ticks that is displayed in the attributes of the shield in seconds. While blocking, you are not slowed. Your block will end, as if stated earlier, you hold up your shield for too long, or if you block an attack, if you hit an entity, swap your shield into a different hand, open a GUI like a chest or villager trading window, or if you sprint. If you sprint, you can activate a bash effect if one is specified. I'll cover bash effects later in this video. Once your shield lowers for any reason, a cooldown will start. The length of this cooldown is determined by the cooldown attribute. This is, once again, a length of time in ticks that determines the amount of time before you can raise your shield again. While a cooldown is active, an icon will be displayed that fills up over the duration of your cooldown. Related to cooldown is the disabler mechanic. There are items classified as disablers. When you block an attack from a disabler item, your shield can do one of two things. Resist being disabled, this is set with a disable resistant attribute, or have a specific cooldown set based on the disable time attribute. An item is a disabler item if it's in the disabler item tag or if it has the NBT disabler 1B. If you want an item in the disabler tag to not be a disabler item, you can add the NBT disabler 0B. Now there are two types of blocking, normal and parry. Normal blocking uses a damage reduction formula based on the attributes block value and minimum block value. The damage reduction applied is a linear falloff from the maximum block value to the minimum block value over the duration of your block time. So for example, if you have a maximum block value of 8, a minimum block value of 4, and a max time of 6 seconds, if you are blocking for 3 seconds, you'll have an effective block value of 6. Block value is displayed in the attributes of the shield directly, so a block value of 8 will display as 8 max damage reduction. The damage falloff is displayed in the attributes of the shield with a persistence value. Persistence is displayed in three values, high, medium, and low. High persistence is when the minimum block value is from 66.66% to 100% of the block value attribute. Medium persistence is when the minimum is from 33.34% to 66.65% of maximum value. And low is, is when minimum is from 0% to 33.33% of the maximum block value. There are two additional attributes for normal blocking. Player block effect and entity block effect are IDs for a command to run in the event functions. I'll cover how to add effects to the event functions later in this video. The player block effect is an effect applied to the player when you block su successfully, and the entity block effect is an effect to apply to the entity that you blocked. The other type of blocking is a parry. A parry blocks all damage when successful. The amount of time you can parry an attack is defined by the parry time attribute. Generally, you will want the parry time to be equal to the max time value. If those values are equal, you don't have to specify a block value and minimum block value attributes. The system does allow for both types of blocking on the same shield if you want to have that though. Parries can have coyote time. Coyote time, when specified, is an amount of time that you can activate a parry after you take damage. This is enabled by the attribute can coyote. When defining this attribute, you must specify it with the value 1b. The attribute coyote time specifies the amount of time in ticks that you can parry after you are hit. A coyote parry does not prevent damage, but instead restores a bit of the HP you lost from the attack you parried. This does mean that if an attack is fatal, you will not be able to parry it in coyote time since you are in fact too dead to parry. Parries also have effects that can be applied when you parry successfully, specified with the attributes player parry effect and entity parry effect. This is identical to how the block effects function, with an ID that corresponds to an effect in the events folder. Once again, that will be covered later in the video. A block is successful if the entity that hits you is within an area defined by the X angle and Y angle attributes. X angle is the vertical angle and Y angle is the horizontal angle of this window. The blocking angle is displayed in the attributes in three values, wide, average, and narrow. Narrow is defined as any Y angle below 70, 
average is any angle between 71 and 110, and wide is anything above 111. X angle is not considered for the display of the attribute, and all presets in the generator have an X angle of 90. When you successfully block or parry an attack, your shield takes damage. The durability of your shield is defined by the durability attribute. This is a value that defines how many times a shield can block an attack before it breaks. Due to the fact that the item used for shields is a carrot on a stick, the durability displayed with the advanced tooltips will be inaccurate in any case where the maximum durability for your shield is not equal to 25. There is an attribute that allows a shield to reflect arrows. Can reflect arrow defines whether a shield can or cannot reflect an arrow. The speed at which an arrow is reflected is dependent on how long you have been blocking. The rate at which the speed degrades is halved if the block that is reflecting the arrow is a parry. Shields also have a bash mechanic. Bash effect defines an ID that corresponds to an effect in the events folder. Once again, I'll be covering effects later in this video. To activate a bash, you sprint while blocking. You can activate a bash immediately, so if you block while sprinting, you will activate the bash effect. Now lastly is the model display attributes. Default model defines the custom model data to use by default on your shield, and blocking model defines the custom model data to use while you are blocking. I will cover how to create your own models to add to the resource pack later in this video. So, now that I've covered the mechanics and what each attribute does, let me go over how to use the generator that TS has made for this. At the top of the page are two buttons. The default and advanced buttons change what mode the generator is in. The default mode has presets for persistence value and block angle, while the advanced mode allows you to enter the values directly. To keep this section simple, I'll just be covering the default mode. Now, while hovering over the name of any attribute, you can see some information about that attribute. The first set of values you can enter is the name and model values. After that is the blocking type. The first dropdown is where you select what type of blocking you want to use, either normal or parry. With normal selected, you can specify the block value and persistence level, as well as the block effects. With parry selected, you can just enter the parry effects, since this generator defaults the parry time to the max value attribute value, and defaults coyote time to two ticks. After the blocking type is the basic technical attributes. Max time, cooldown, durability, and bash effect are all self-explanatory and have information if you hover over the attribute name. Block angles have three presets you can choose, wide, average, and narrow. These values are all on Y angle and are 120 for wide, 90 for average, and 60 for narrow. The angst angle for all presets is 90. And the last basic technical attribute is the can reflect arrows attribute. The last set of values you can set is the disable status. The drop-down allows you to choose the amount of time the shield gets disabled for, or if it's disable resistant. Once you've filled out all of your attributes, you can click the Generate Give button at the bottom of the page. This will give you a give command that you can put into a command block to receive the shield that you've created. Now that I've covered the generator, I'm going to cover how to add effects to the event functions. Bash effect, player parry effect, entity parry effect, player block effect, and entity block effect all use identical formatting inside of the event functions that match their names. Inside of the Cus Shield namespace in the Custom Shields data pack is a folder called Event. Inside is six functions, five of which share the name with the attribute that matches it. Inside of each function is an example effect that you can replace if you want to. To add a new effect, you just add a new execute command with a different value on the score it's checking. The functions player peri effect and player block effect are executed on the player, and entity peri effect and entity block effect are executed on the entity that you blocked an attack from. You aren't really limited to single commands for these effects. You can do function calls or whatever you really want to, uh, as long as they functionally work uh, with a sort of single command call, you can add it as, a, as an effect. Now lastly, let's go over how to add models for this system. If you want to create your own models for this, I recommend using Blockbench to create them. Provided in the resource pack are two template models, a normal vanilla model shield looking, and a smaller square shield with like a dome on the front, it's sort of a buckler model. To create your own shield model, you will need to create both a normal model and a blocking model. How I recommend doing this is creating a base model that has the default display values, and then having a blocking model reference the base model as a parent and then change the display values. Both of my template models use this method, so you can look at those for reference, as well as copy the display values since those mimic the vanilla look in first person as closely as I can get them. Once you have your models made, you can add both of the models to the custom model data overrides on the carrot on a stick item model. Once you have those specified, you can use those custom model data values to display your shield in game. Well, hopefully that covers the system in enough detail. The links to the repo and the generator are in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.